In this tutorial, we work through a second example in which we divide one polynomial function by another. Now, in this case, we're asked to divide f of x, which is 2x to the power of 5 plus x cubed minus 3x squared minus 8 by g of x, which is x cubed plus x minus 1. And we need to give expressions for both the quotient function q of x and the remainder function r of x. Okay, so let me move this question to the side, like so, and now we can get started. So what we need to do here is to divide f of x by g of x. In other words, we need to find an expression for 2x to the power of 5 plus x cubed minus 3x squared minus 8 divided by x cubed plus x minus 1. Now to do that, I'm going to start by presenting this as a long division. So I write 2x to the power of 5 plus, and here comes a trick, 0x to the power of 4 plus x to the power of 3 minus 3x squared plus 0x minus 8. Now, we don't have to write this 0x to the power of 4 and this 0x. I would strongly suggest you do so, though. It definitely helps in keeping our working organized and definitely helps avoiding silly mistakes. Okay, now that that's said and done, I write this as a table form, a bit like long division with whole numbers, something looking like this. And on the left-hand side here, I write the expression by which we're dividing, that's g of x, which was x cubed plus x minus 1. So just to be clear here, this expression here is g of x, and the expression we have on the top row here is f of x. Now we're ready. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to find what we need to multiply x cubed by, that's the leading term in g of x, to get to the leading term of f of x, which is 2x to the power of 5. And it doesn't take us too long to see that we'd have to multiply x cubed by 2x to the power of 2 to get 2x to the power of 5. So at the very top of the table, I write 2x to the power of 2. Now that that's done, I multiply this entire expression, x cubed plus x minus 1, by 2x to the power of 2. And I write the result directly below this top row here. So let's go ahead and do that. 2x squared times x cubed, well that's 2x to the power of 5, plus 2x squared times x, which is 2x cubed. And I write that directly beneath the x cubed of the top row. So that would be plus 2x cubed minus 2x squared times 1. So that's 2x squared, which I write beneath the 3x squared I have here. So that's minus 2x squared. And although we don't have to, I like to write this plus 0x to the power of 4 here. This simply reminds me that I haven't forgotten an x to the power of 4 term, and that it indeed is 0. Now that that's done, we subtract this entire expression from the top one, which I present as a long subtraction here, like so. So let's go ahead. We have 2x to the power of 5 minus 2x to the power of 5, which equals to 0. 0x to the power of 4 minus 0x to the power of 4, which again is 0. x cubed minus 2x cubed which leads to negative x cubed, and negative 3x squared minus negative 2x squared, which turns into negative 3x squared plus 2x squared, which is negative x squared. And finally, we have 0x and minus 8, which we just carry down. So that's plus 0x minus 8. Done. We now repeat this process for this new polynomial we have at the bottom row here. So, we need to ask ourselves what we need to multiply the leading term of g of x, which is x cubed by, to get to the leading term of this polynomial, which is negative x cubed. And it doesn't take us long to see that we'd have to multiply x cubed by negative 1 to get to negative x cubed. So I write negative 1 at the top here. Now that that's done, we multiply the entire polynomial, x cubed plus x minus 1, by negative 1, and we write the result directly beneath the bottom row that we have here. So let's go ahead. We have negative 1 times x cubed, which leads to negative x cubed, so I write that, negative x cubed, plus negative 1 times x, which is negative x, so I write minus x beneath the x there, minus 
negative 1 times 1. So that's minus negative 1, which turns into plus 1. So I write plus 1 at the end here. And although we don't have to, I like to write plus 0x squared, just to highlight the fact that I haven't forgotten an x squared term. We now subtract this entire expression from the row above it. So that would be negative x cubed minus negative x cubed. Those two terms cancel out, so we're left with 0x cubed. We then have negative x squared minus 0x squared. So that's just negative x squared. We then have 0x minus negative x, which turns into 0x plus x. So that's plus x. And finally, we have negative 8 minus positive 1. So that's negative 8 minus 1, which is negative 9. And we're done. And at this stage, we stop. And the reason for this is because this polynomial, negative x squared plus x minus 9, has a degree which is less than the polynomial by which we're dividing. Indeed, negative x squared plus x minus 9 is of degree 2, whereas x cubed plus x minus 1 is of degree 3. And as soon as we reach a polynomial whose degree is less than the degree of the polynomial by which we're dividing, we stop. Now, this polynomial that I've underlined in red is known as the remainder function, which we write r of x. On the other hand, the polynomial function that we obtained at the very top of the table here is known as the quotient function, and that's q of x. And what we've just shown here is that f of x divided by g of x is equal to 2x squared minus 1 plus negative x squared plus x minus 9, all of which is written over x cubed plus x minus 1, where 2x squared minus 1 is our quotient function q of x, and the numerator here, negative x squared plus x minus 9, is the remainder function r of x. And this long division also allows us to write f of x in terms of the quotient and remainder functions. That would look like this we can now state that f of x equals to g of x, which is x cubed plus x minus 1, times the quotient function, which was 2x squared minus 1, plus the remainder function, so plus negative x squared plus x minus 9. And just to be clear here, that's f of x equals to g of x times q of x, which is the quotient function, plus the remainder function, r of x. And there we have it. That's it for this tutorial.